and good evening, everyone. Welcome live inside Liner Rink in Ithaca, New York. It's Ivy League hockey here on ESPN Plus. I'm Gertie Wittenberg. Pleased to be joined tonight by class of 1988, is it? It I is. I a long time ago. <laughs> I did not you confirm gotta. it beforehand, but I know I've seen it in writing. <laughs> Tony Eisenhut, class of 88, Cornell University, former player here with the Big Red program. He'll be my right-hand man here this evening as the Big Red. Somewhat surprisingly, they are the ones looking for the weekend split here tonight <laughs> after a pretty good overall effort last night by the visiting Michigan State Spartans, Cornell controlling for long stretches last night, but just could not capitalize. Yeah, no, the second period was really where Cornell was able to stay with Michigan State, but first and third, uh, the Spartans kind of dominated and controlled, and tonight the Big Red will see if they can undo that. Well, John Lethman, he was one of the storylines last night, and he will get the start once again here this evening from head coach Danton Cole. Their opening weekend, two weekends ago, the goaltenders split the starts, Lethman defeating Northern Michigan. Then it was freshman Drew DeRitter getting the nod in his collegiate debut. He stumbled four to three. No such split here this weekend after Lethman's performance last night saw him stop 32 of 34. He was solid. He did not need to be spectacular, and I think that was partly because of the Cornell Big Red shot selection and where they originated from. Yeah, a lot of shots from the outside, but I thought Lefteman was fantastic from the standpoint that he just, there were no second and third chances. A couple of lineup changes from an MSU perspective tonight. Into the lineup, Jake Smith and Gianluca Estevez. Out of the lineup, good sir and Manson. For the Big Red, they insert freshman Chase Brekel as they will go with 13 forwards and six defensemen tonight. That means Misa Song, who dressed last night but didn't see time on a shift, so he did not play in the game, so they put the extra manpower to work up front tonight, hoping for a little bit more than two goals and certainly hoping for a better performance by the defense and goaltender Matt Goleida. Spartans on the attacker early on, just underway. Hiroshi with his shot, he lifted that one up and over the crossbar and it'll be chipped off the glass by Noah Bald and the spinning puck picked up through center ice and pushed ahead by Tristan Mullen, but he got jammed up along the wall and Michigan State looking for the long sprint pass. Tommy Apap couldn't pick it up and behind the cage, Alex Green is on him. Michigan State 2 and 1 coming in for the Big Red their season opener last night as they are looking for their first win in game number 2 of the season after two dominating exhibition affairs but that's become a bit of the norm over the years here yeah. on East Hill the regular season a vastly different story as Goleida making the kick out there on the Stevens drive and the Big Red looking to push out through center ice now Vanderlin force back inside his own zone Apap wedged the puck free but the Cornell D there to pick it up and here comes Yanni Caldas. Caldas at the red line, looping it in, little one hopper off the end wall, and Zach Osborne is on it. The Big Red unable to establish the four check, but they'll intercept this puck. Regish knocked it in, and we're gonna say it's a delayed offside, and we'll get our first stoppage a minute 34 into a scoreless first period. I think one of the things we'll see from the Big Red tonight is, especially from the outset, Grady, is just trying to keep it simple, making the quick pass, not trying to overthink it, not trying to do too much. Just get in a routine and a rhythm, playing with some confidence and, and build off of, of that simple play. And we talk about the offense and not getting high quality scoring chances last night by and large of the 34 shots they put on goal, but the defense and the giveaways they had, there weren't a ton of giveaways, but boy, when they made mistakes, they, they were big. ended up in the back of the net. They were quality. <laughs> Cornell looking to go to work offensively here. Let the puck to slide into the corner. Tommy Miller on it for the visitors. I head through center, Lambden will dump and chase, and they're gonna say that one was thrown in shy, the center ice red line, and a stoppage here on an icing call against Michigan State. And Danton Cole, head coach of the Spartans, he had to be really happy last night, coming into a usually hostile environment, and a team that's very young, still building, they've got that top power line up front that provides a lot of offense, but uh, they played a really good team game last night to pick up a road win here in a tough building. They did, and they played well in the special teams. They were able to keep uh, Cornell off the board for the most part and then put a power play goal, one for three. And so anytime your special teams do well, you got to be happy. Miller flings this one around the wall. Spartans trying to settle. And Saliba, who got things started last night, Sam Saliba, the captain of Michigan State, that short-handed goal off of the Blocked shot the one-timer by Alec McCray, and Saliba came in alone. Spartans looked like they were going to chase at center, but it's held in by Lambden, then his shot ramping off the stick of the aforementioned Alec McCray, and into the safety net. It get a stoppage here, and a draw to the right of Matt Goleida. 
Delighted playing just two periods of hockey during the exhibition, and I don't know combined if he saw double digits as far as shots are concerned. How much do you think factored into his performance last night with the lack of work? Yeah, I, I think it's it's part of it. You know, it's um, Matt's a focused young man, so just just some bad breaks last night. And things didn't go his way, and it just seemed out of sorts. So fresh day, and I'm I'm sure he'll. Uh, get it together and, and come out playing the kind of game he's capable of. So if you're going to have one of those nights along with yeah. his defensive mates, you'd rather have it at this point of the season than uh, when it counts, maybe yeah. Lake Placid or in the NCAAs. Yeah, no, and it's uh, it, it was both ways. It was D and, and the goaltender last night just um, struggling to make some of those connections. And there were moments of, uh, you know, where it's the Cornell team you'd expect and, and what the expectations are but just not consistent. And, and you know, as the course of the year goes along, Grady, we're going to see that consistency improve because Coach Schaefer and, and his uh, assistant coaches um, have very high expectations in that regard. So penalty call coming up. Our first of the night, Cody Milan sent off for hooking as he got locked up with Brendan Locke in the neutral zone. So the big red power play, they're looking to improve upon last night's 0 for 5 performance. And in addition to coming up scoreless on the man advantage, giving up that shorthanded tally by Captain Sam Saliba in period number one as the Big Red ever played with a lead last night. They were able to not the score at one and then the Spartans blowing it open with a big four goal third period to win going away. And the Spartans will send this one down ice. Michigan State after their five for five PK performance last night, now 13 of 15 on the year. And last night with the power play unit, I thought they did, other than one of them, where they struggled getting set up, did a nice job of getting set up, moving the puck around. And, and so the, the foundation is there. Got to get the puck to the net a little bit more, but a, a good foundation for them to work from. Caldas moving ahead through center ice into the zone. Cam Donaldson, he's going to pull up along the boards, feeds a slot. Andrea back for Caldas, a long shot. Rebound free. Donaldson, a shot, never made it through. Still loose with a big scramble to the right of John Lotheman. And the big red push it to the sideboards. Now another shot in front, backhanded try. And that one off the right pad of Lotheman. So now some good pressure here as energized this line of rank crowd. A scoreless contest as the Big Red worked the power play. Green a one-timer, and that one hit a stick and ramped wide of the net as it knuckled to the end wall. Green again, feeds to his left. Caldas in front, and that one off of Bo Sterrett's stick and just outside the goal post. Now Cornell energized here. Sterrett's centering feed caught a Michigan State stick. A break there for the visitors as Cornell has to regroup. Yeah, Cornell clearly got the message to get the puck to the net because... Uh, we're seeing there no real uh, third and fourth pass if they got an opportunity to get it to the front of the net and look for a deflection. McCray, that is pass tip through center. Morgan Barron going to move in. 15 to go in the power play as a big red. A little bit slow in completing a change here. Brendan Smith off the bench as that puck circulated around. Now Smith at the point, pushes it down low. Milan readying to return, and then Tristan Mullen, he just steamrolled Jared Rosberg trying to get to that loose biscuit. Out of the box comes Milan. We're back to five on five hockey, but pretty good look on the man advantage from a Cornell perspective, but the Spartans hold the fort as this one gets chipped through center and may have caught some equipment hanging over the Michigan State bench across from our broadcast position. Yeah, Lethman, I thought he had a nice little series right there. Cornell had a couple of nice opportunities down low. So we see on the review, I think it's Bo Starrett mixing it up with the Michigan State defender, and there's a little bit of a scrum, but Lethemann taking away the bottom of the net. And Cornell trying to drive the net, and Lethemann looking good early on. Shots on goal officially reading from our online tally, two to two. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure seemed yeah. a little bit more intense down to our left, but those are the official numbers, and really it doesn't matter unless you score. That's so. right. <laughs> Long shot here, and a glove hand stop made by Goleida. And we'll get a face off to his right. And Got to believe nobody more than Matt Goleida wants to rebound after last night's very subpar performance. And, I mean, you, you talk about his performance as a freshman a year ago. Seemingly, there's almost nowhere to go but down. But yeah. hopefully he can bring it back up here this evening. Yeah, no, it, it's you know, the last year, and you know goaltenders, you've seen enough over time momentum. They like action. They like to make a lot of saves. They like to get in a routine. So I think as the year goes along, we're only going to see him get better. Big Red trying to clear it out here. Hiroshi with a swat at it. And that one going to come free through center. And sophomore winger 
Mitchell Lewandowski in, beating it out, Kudarenko closing, and nice defensive play there in the back check by Kyle Betts, but the Spartans keep it alive. Rosberg a big blast, and calm, cool, and collected. It's Matthew Goliath with a glove hand save as he slid to his left, and he'll get the whistle. And one thing that you really notice with Goliath when he's in that zone is everything looks super simple. There's nothing... Uh, um, acrobatic and, and no heroics, just sees the puck, makes the save, and doesn't put the rebounds out there. He readies for the draw as Starrett unable to win it away from Estevez. And the shot clock high in the zone is Chase Brinkle making his collegiate debut here tonight against Michigan State. He was a healthy scratch last night against the Spartans. Pretty good offensive productivity in the two exhibitions, a long shot here. Catching the pad of Goliath and the Big Red going to accelerate through center. Jeff Malott, kind of one on three there as Brakel was coming, but then tripped up in the neutral zone. Estevez couldn't chop in, settled by Malott, and here come the Red. Brakel into the corner. He's hit there by Christian Krieger, part of the twin brother tandem, Christian and Cole, and both sons of former NHLer Todd Krieger, now an assistant coach at Western Michigan University, as Tommy Miller. Gains the red line, and he'll spin it around the glass. Goliath very casually knocking that one down as it was riding the top of the dasher. And McCray flips it over for his defensive partner, and Smith going to take a look up on the near side. All the way through center, made contact, so left him in force to play it. Sniffing around was the captain, Mitch Vanderlin. Cornell looking to go to work, but Sahoviak chipped it to the Zamboni doors down to our left. At the point, Smith keeping it alive. Smith walks it along the line. And that one coming yeah. outside, so Cornell had to vacate. And Osborne will leave it there for the Spartans. Seven minutes gone by here in period number one. No score in a game that's featured a pretty good pace so far. Yeah, no, and I thought last night was a pretty good pace as well, so they're they're continuing. This is a line that I find really exciting. Donaldson, Andreev, and uh, Mitch Vanderlin. A lot of potential with those guys, the way they see the ice and move the puck. Spartans on the attack with Saliba sent into the corner glass. Puck battled for there, and out to the point it comes. Zach Osborne, long shot, knocked down by Goliath. Got the blocker on that with some traffic milling around in front of him. And the Big Red going to come through center with numbers. At the line, Regish in, right circle in front. Shot by Caldas, the defenseman jumping up on the play. And Lutheran, his movement at a minimum, and he just slid over and got the right leg on it. Now a backhander in front as Caldas worked that one off the near half wall. It hit a stick and went wide, and the Spartans dodge a bullet or two on that rush. So a great play by Regish to see Caldas on the back door and just feathered a beautiful pass to him. Mullen and Locke, a little give and go as they tried to get something going at the MSU line, but the Spartans stand them up. And here comes Michigan State, Brody Stevens, who had a third period goal in that uprising in period number three that mm -hmm. put the game out of reach and actually broke the game open before putting it out of reach. He couldn't get it in deep, and Sasana. He snapped that 1-1 one, one tie with a shot from that spot on the ice right there from where he just put it off of Smith's stick. And into the corner they go, Patrick Kodorenko. He is slowed down, Sasana awaiting it, just inside the blue line. Garosi cycling it, Lewandowski chasing, but Cornell getting to it first. Tristan Mullen on the corner wall, shovel behind the net, Matt Nuttall trying to get it to flatten out here so he could throw it out through center. Noah Bald got tied up with Rosberg. Pushed free from a crowd by Betts, but the Spartans up with it. And they'll bob and weave their way to the line, but they can't work in as Bald stood up the puck carrier, Hirose, and then Hirose hits the deck after sliding that one deep into Cornell territory. The Big Red now going to work it out, and Mullen flanged it off the skate and the stick of Betts with under 11 minutes to go here in period number one. Still looking for the game's first goal, and as we talked about, good flow to this game so far, and I think from a Cornell perspective, that top line last night of Kodorenko, Hiroshi, and Lewandowski, they were very noticeable in period number one, particularly on offensive chances. And for the most part, neutralized here tonight. It's been a back-and-forth game so far. Yeah, it has, and Cornell's really, you know, if they're playing well, they're able just to roll the lines, which is a huge advantage, not trying to have to match up with a top line like that. Here comes Yanni Caldas. A couple of good opportunities already in this first period. Stare it in front. Short side try by Caldas. And getting the blocker arm on that was goaltender John Lutheran. Lutheran unofficially with four shots faced so far tonight. Seems like Cornell's had a few more in the way of opportunities, but Lutheran's been perfect. 
It took a while before the Big Red could beat him last night, nearly halfway through the game with Max Andreev netting his first collegian game. He has the puck here, feeds it off. Green back in front, but the pass going behind the Russian-born freshman. And the Spartans able to push it out through center. Mitch Vanderlin with everybody back on side, coming down the near boards. Under 10 minutes to go in period number one is that errant pass at center. Catching the Cornell defensive pairing, a little bit slow in a change. So the Big Red get a dump and chase, but it picked up by the Spartans. One of the Krieger twins going to bounce this one through the neutral zone all the way down. Icing looked for, but waved off. Turning is not only at two four checkers right in his face, but Cornell able to break the pressure as Captain Mitch Vanderlin knocked down. Puck between his knees. He gets back up, can't find the handle. And MSU going to push it ahead here. Lammed it. That one batted down the high stick of Nuttall, but it was then touched up next by a Spartan, so the play continues. Whistles a rarity here in period number one ever since the first five or six minutes came off the clock as these teams going back and forth. Scoreless contest between the Spartans and the Big Red. Just the ninth all-time meeting between these two programs. Five, two, and one the advantage in favor of the visitors from East Lansing, Michigan. They're on the attack here, but it's a two-on-two -two scrum in the corner. Puck is raked loose at the blue line. Christian Krieger out of the reach of Lewandowski. Now turning. It's Hiroshi, I believe. Nope, that was 13 and not 17. That was Sanford that zipped that one around the glass, and that one coming all the way out. Barron putting a body on the puck carrier. Christian Krieger as the Spartans maintaining possession inside their own blue line. Rosberg hit by a ball. Does he release it after gaining the red line? Kalida cutting it off, and Caldas got to spin back into the corner. Hitting the reset button here, long outlet, past Mullen, all the way down, icing waved off. Noah Bald has it. Mullen was cutting to the front, jam shot off the centering feed. That one catching the base of the cage, and Luthamon paddling that one into the corner. You know, Rosberg settling it down here for Michigan State as the clock continues to tick downward. Now under eight minutes to go. It's been a while since we've had a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like running time here, old-time hockey. <laughs> Sometimes you wish for that. I think there were probably a few Cornell fans last night that were thinking that way in period number three on Friday night. Now the Spartans pressuring, but turning it over. And the subsequent clear was made by the big red. That was Lewandowski that lost the handle right between the circles. Now Osborne gets past Starrett. Brakel chasing through center as Cody Milan has it. He tried to throw to the front, but that one off the skates of Brendan Smith. Spartans with it down low. Odorenko puts on the brakes. A little stop and go. Now got to carry it up on the right wing side to the line. Osborne looking to take the pressure off as Jeff Mallott stepped out on him. And now a penalty call coming here against Cornell as a player going down. We'll take a timeout. 7.04 to go in the first. Still scoreless from Ithaca, New York. It's Ivy League Hockey on ESPN+. Plus. Back here in Ithaca along with Tony Eisenhut, I'm Grady Wittenberg. Hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast of Ivy League Hockey here on ESPN+. 7.04 to go in period number one. Scoreless here in Ithaca. The shots reading 6-4 in favor of Michigan State. I'm not sure who's keeping shots there, Grady. <laughs> <laughs> I'll believe them, but uh, the, the flow territorial control really has been Cornell's advantage for the most part so far in this game. Well, there's a little... Prep work today as the Spartans pressuring a shot off the chest protector of Goliath. The rebound pushed to the near side, and Lewandowski fanned on that rolling puck. As the Spartans on the power play here, they were one for three last night as they look for the game's first tally. As Cornell with their man in the box, that's Brendan Smith as he made the open field tackle behind the net on a Spartan forward prior to our commercial timeout. Deflected shot here, going to go up and out of play, but looking at the shot charts and how they track them, uh, from last night's game, Cornell outshot Michigan State 34 to 22, but when you look in that prime scoring area from the face-off dots down to the goal mouth, yeah. it was very minimal from a Cornell perspective. Here tonight, only four shots that they're showing officially, but they've had a lot of activity close in and some good opportunities within those as well. Yeah, as the coaching staff would talk about it in that house area, and it's the critical scoring area, and much better tonight than last night. Kodorenko with it as Michigan State. Plenty of time to go on their first power play chance as that one knocked down. Cornell coming up empty and the only other man advantage awarded by tonight's officials, Cam Lynch and Peter Fiola, the referees. And the lines tonight being worked. I had them in front of me a second ago. Uh, Glenn Cook and Michael Noth was scheduled. He was here last night. It's supposed to be the same four-man unit, but 
Noah falling ill this afternoon. So uh, one of the lineys from today's women's game, which was a Cornell Big Red victory over Dartmouth 4-0, uh, Anthony Kenny doing double duty here tonight. So kudos to him. Yeah, he's <laughs> burning some calories, a little extra uh, dinner tonight when he's done with this. This is a good workout for him, two games in a row. Extra dinner and an extra paycheck. Yeah, that's that's right. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Long wrister here by Cezanne. A lock out a piece of that, playing it harmlessly to the end glass. Power play time down to 32 seconds, and the save made by Goleida. And Locke muscling that out of harm's way, but he couldn't clear it. It's taken by Hirose. Out to the blue line, Sasana near side, Lewandowski throws it to the slot. Thought he was going to take the big wind up and let a one-timer go. He elected to push it to the slot. Patrick Kodorenko was covered there, and the big red get a big clear. Yeah, nice job by the penalty kill unit. Some uh, experienced tandems out there on the forwards on those units, and they're doing a nice job. Lambden at the line as Brendan Smith ready to return with the puck deep in the Cornell zone. He does. And the pass comes through. Long shot by Rosberg. Not quite sure what that hit or who it hit in front as Goleida was knocked down to the ice and stayed out of the goal mouth. And the big red sending it back the other way. Bounding puck through center. And McCray moved back inside the Cornell blue line. Spun off the wall. The Spartans with it. Lambden shooting. And the save made by Goleida. Re-centered under the stick of Rosberg as the defenseman came all the way down between the hash marks, but they couldn't make the connection. And the Big Red, a little bit fortuitous there, not to be trailing 1-0 as they come out with speed now. Max Andrea scored his first collegiate goal last night, tied the game in the second period for the Big Red before Michigan State scoring four of the five goals in the final period to win going away 5-2. Stahoviak to Sanford across the line. Sanford tried to drop it back. Now the defense involved. Christian Krieger's shot knocked down the circle. And the Big Red looking for some space through the neutral zone. Vanderlin in, holding right into the midriff of Lethemann. He'll hold on, and we'll take a timeout. 3.57 to go in the first. Scoreless in Ithaca. Back here in Ithaca, 3.57 to go here. A scoreless first period. And uh, after we finally got the whistle on the previous commercial timeout. Mm -hmm. Michigan State, they've upped their game here, and they're now at shooting the Big Red 10-4, and they've had some great scoring opportunities in front of Matthew Goleida. Yeah, they really have the ebb and flow of game. You often talk about it in five-minute increments, and Michigan State's had a nice flow for themselves in the last five minutes. Nuttle clears it up on the right side. Regish to Barron in the slot. Penalty call coming here as Nuttall jumped up on the play. Quick shot blocked by the defense as Tristan Mullen was denied and that one stinging Tommy Apap. Take a break with Cornell in the power play after this on ESPN+. Plus. Brody Stevens to the box for Michigan State. 16.30 the time of the calls. A big red heading on there. Second power play of the night. 0 for 5 last night. Came up empty on their first chance. If you haven't figured that out because we're a scoreless game. Master of the obvious here I am. Quick shot off the rebound. Mullen denied as that one. Off a stick into the end glass it goes. Now Rosberg bouncing it out to the line. Hustling over. Caldas keeping it in. Barron right circle. Mullen no shooting lane. So he patiently sends it back out on top. Caldas through traffic. They score! Yanni Caldas a little knuckler. Butterflying past John Lefteman on the power play. And the Big Red breaks through to grab a 1-0 lead. I think that might have been a little payback for last night on the goal that bounced off of Alex Green because I think that may have been a Michigan State defender trying to pick it out of the air and put it behind his goaltender. We'll see here on the replay. I really couldn't see from that angle. Well, Cal just let it go, and oh. we'll await word to see who gets credit. The defenseman down low was Tommy Miller. Sometimes you can tell they turn around and like, oh, yeah, that went off of me. Yeah, Didn't really get that feel on that angle, but we'll wait and see once they make the call. But most importantly, from a Cornell perspective, the Big Red power play strike for a 1-0 lead. And Caldas indeed does get credit for it. So Mullen, the only assist, and the big red with the late tally here in period number one. Now will be called for icing, and we'll get a face off to the right of Goleida upcoming with 247 showing on the clock. And just a different feel, and it's only one game, but from a Cornell perspective, they never led last night. Andreev's goal tied it up, but uh, it's definitely a, a different 
kind of feel within when you get that goal and kind of feel like you're battling uphill and you talk about Fornell really not getting some breaks last night. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely a different feel. And, and you saw it on the, the power play, Grady, two of them so far. Cornell's getting that puck to the net come heck or high water. And if the shooting lane might be full, they're still trying to put it through, not taking dumb shots, but just working it to the net. And uh, clearly a different feel tonight. And a one for two on the power play is the red. However, thinking defense right now, as the four check was on, the big red bump it off the glass, and this one cleared down. Noah Ball tying up with Jared Rosberg. Puck bounding around through the center ice area, adorned by the Cornell logo. Fedorenko tried to shoulder his way in, but that puck did not bounce friendly. He had to reach behind him to pick it up, and that gave the Cornell D a chance to collapse. Now Kodorenko got to give it another shot here. Gives it to Hiroshi. He was challenged, and Chase Brinkle, the freshman, able to send that one out to center ice. Under two minutes to go here in period number one. Caldas with his first of the year. Mullen the assist, and the Big Red, a 1-0 lead over visiting Michigan State. Brakel making some really nice plays. Again, keeping it pretty simple, but showing uh, some quality speed. Sam Saliba, angled wrister from off the left boards, and Goleida going to make the save. Cornell being outshot 10 to 8. Goleida perfect, and the power play goal. Putting Cornell in front, 1 0 here. And you know, as confident as Michigan State was last night, I don't think a whole lot has changed from their perspective here this evening. They're, they're playing a pretty good road game so far. And you talk about leading in shots, but the Big Red finally becoming opportunistic and getting that power play goal. Yeah, capitalizing on the, as you said, the opportunity and getting that puck to the front of the net. But uh, Michigan State's playing a good game. Uh, nothing um. they could be disappointed with. Andrea trying to lift this one free. Stepping in was Mullen. Mullen taking the body as he bounces off of Lambden and then slings him to the ice. Spartans with the puck as they look for a late strike to try and take this one into the intermission tied up. Saliba backing his man out. That was Nuttle before he caught the puck and zipped it over to the left side. Boutrous Gafari dressing as a 7th D here tonight. Logged a lot of time in the win on Friday night and he sent that one around the boards. Talk about how young this team is overall, particularly on the blue line. You get a guy like that, and he's a junior, so you're probably going to, he, he dresses as a seventh man in the line chart, but he's going to see some time when the youngsters may still be getting acclimated. Yeah, they, they used him last night, despite being, as you said, that seventh uh, defenseman on, on the line chart. And uh, he did a nice job, again, logging uh, a fair bit of time, moved the puck, kept it fairly simple. And uh, tell you, when I, when you watch teams like this playing, the, the simpler it is, it seems the more success they have. And when you start trying to get too complicated, um, things are generally going wrong. So under a minute to go here in the first. Rigish bumping off of Rosberg down low. And Cornell up with the puck as Alec McCray found himself all the way into the right wing corner. Brendan Locke covering his defensive post, and now he'll be activated here as the Spartans move out with a three on two. The big line out there, Hiroshi shooting, and that one deflects to the end boards. Penalty call coming, Morgan Barron going to take a seat here as he sent Rosberg to the ice. Kodorenko bumped by Rigish. Sazana holding in. Ten to go in the period as the Spartans pushing here for the tying goal, Hiroshi. Now Lewandowski back out on top. Sasana had his shot blocked, and the follow-up played in on goal, and Goleida awkwardly handled that one as it popped up into the air. A couple of sticks were swinging at it as the buzzer sounded, ending our opening period, but it's going to be a two-minute power play and a fresh sheet of ice with Morgan Barron in the box as the Big Red have the one nothing lead, but the Spartans, you'll have those big guns out there, and they'll have a great chance to try and knot it up early on in the second. A yeah, clean sheet of ice is going to be a gift to start the second on a, on a power play. So Cornell, tall order coming out. But uh, at the end of one, I think both teams are going in pretty happy with how their teams played. Really good and a little bit of different feel from a Cornell perspective, obviously being in the lead. But still, Michigan State, they're a scrappy team, a young team with some veteran leadership as far as the forward uh, unit is concerned. But uh, John Letheman, he's been good again here tonight. You know, he came up with 32 saves last night. That one shot beating him, but I mean, that's a deflection that's going to beat most every goaltender, but he's been there when he's had to, so his play has been steady as well heading into this rematch here tonight. Yeah, no, he's doing a nice job of playing uh, good positional hockey, taking away the percentages, 
And as you said, a deflection like that, uh, any any quality goaltender is going to struggle with it and it's going to get by from time to time. So they uh, added an assist on the Cornell goal. Morgan Barron, ironically, will pick up the secondary helper as his number 27 now posted on the scoreboard down to our left. He's going to be in the box for two minutes or less to start period number two on that late penalty in our opening frame. But from the positive perspective, as far as Cornell fans are concerned, the Big Red, a 1-0 lead over MSU as they look for their first win of the season. We'll take a break, and when we come back with our intermission report, we'll have highlight packages, out-of-town scores, and more hockey action from Liner Rank in just a moment. one nothing. Cornell leading Michigan State. This is Ivy League Hockey on ESPN+. And back here in Ithaca, the team's getting ready to hit the ice as Matthew Goleido will lead the big red out. He'll work the crease up to our left. John Letheman doing likewise for Michigan State. He will head to the horseshoe end of Lina and get set for period number two with his mates going on a two-minute power play to start off our middle period. Taking a look at out-of-town scores quickly before our face-off in ECAC hockey. Travel partners meeting up once again in the Capital District. And a Rensselaer with a 2-0 lead at Union to start period number two. And Harvard at Thompson Arena in Hanover, New Hampshire tonight. They lead the homestanding Dartmouth Big Green by a 2-1 count. And as was the case last night, some more Big Ten uh, ECAC uh, cross-conference affairs. And uh, it did not end well once again for Colgate today in uh, Miami as uh, the Red Hawks blank Colgate hanging a half dozen on Donny Vaughn's Raiders. Six nothing Miami over Colgate. Elsewhere tonight, Clarkson entertaining Canisius. And that's a scoreless game at the end of one. Quinnipiac on home ice. Big four nothing lead over American International. And uh, St. Lawrence at Michigan once again. The Saints falling 4 0 to the Wolverines at Yost Ice Arena. Early in the first period tonight, it is the host Wolverines, a 1 0 lead over Mark Morris and the St. Lawrence Saints. Our second period underway here. And we talked about it during our break, Tony. Uh, not doing much for the RPI and the strength of schedule <laughs> yeah, as far no. as the ECAC is concerned this weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, uh, ECAC is going to have to. Uh, have a good uh, Christmas break or <laughs> intercession break in some of those non-league events because the preseason this year has been a little bit tough for, for uh, ECAC out of conference play. Spartans on the power play here. Barron in the box for Cornell for interference. He picked that one up as the first period expired. So the Spartans looking to tie things up as they work their second man advantage. Sasana over for Lewandowski. Now into the circle. Kordorenko has it. He'll skate it back out on top as Partisan crowd here on East Hill supporting the penalty kill efforts of the Big Red as the puck comes free, neatly tapped down ice for both Steri, who then calls for a line change. Nice job by the Big Red, again, keeping Michigan State out there on, on the perimeter and not letting them get the puck to the front of the net. Spartans ahead through center at the line. Sam Saliba, the captain, he went east-west and now hits the trailer. Hiroshi going to carry it in. Played in deep by Lewandowski and into the corner. Push back as Saliba cutting to the front. Cody Milan behind the cage. That puck eluding them as a Cornell penalty kill unit getting to it. And they'll flop it all the way down. Let them enforce to play it. And they've worked that Morgan Barron interference penalty down to 30 seconds here early in our second period. I don't think they've got a shot on net yet on this power play. Here comes Lambden at the line. Osborne chipping in deep behind the cage. Saliba had to kick it. Caught the base of the net. Played right back onto his stick. Rosberg pressured at the point. He slings it to his right. Osborne back to Rosberg. Shooting and the save made by Goleida. And uh, juggled the body there to drop it down into the glove as he was on the butterfly on the top edge of the crease. And now just four seconds away is Cornell from returning to full strength. Yeah, and they're right on the, the doorstep there was Lambden for Michigan State looking for uh, some type of rebound. Goleida not putting anything out there at all. That was the first shot with four seconds left on this power play for Michigan State. One shot on goal so far. So the draw will be to the left of Goliath. Starrett leaning in as he did so to battle his numerical counterpart, Sam Saliba, who wasn't happy with either a Cornell player or perhaps a linesman on the drop. Yeah. Cornell got the clear and we're back to five on five hockey. Little chirping there as he looked back over mm -hmm. his shoulder to the captain, Sam Saliba. And the Big Red maintaining its one nothing lead. Little touch pass, says Rosberg. Lost his balance, but here come the Spartans to Hoviak. Shooting high and wide as he used McCray as a screen, but that one 
Lifted off net, circled around the glass and back out to the neutral zone as the Spartans try and play back in. Another deflection off a stick and into section O goes that puck. And a souvenir for the fans on hand here at Lina Rink. And both crowds, I think, a little bit lighter than anticipated to start off this regular season and what I think is a year for Cornell Big Red Hockey fans that I think they're expecting big things, but... Yeah, coming off a 25-win season, I think the uh, expectations are, are very high, but as you said, there's some open seats here in a uh, couple of the different sections and at the end in the horseshoe. So if you're looking for tickets, uh, bring your device, listen to us, and uh, come watch a game. <laughs> It all comes down to money, though. And you and I get these neat little things called media credentials, so we don't have to pay to get That's in and right. watch and do our job. So. <laughs> so we do. are very thankful yeah. for the folks that yeah. are here and for those yeah. watching as well. <laughs> there comes Nuttle ahead through center. Icing will be waved off here as Sanford was the one that deflected that, and the Big Red tried to throw to the front. In deep, that was Donaldson, but he was cut off, knocked down to the ice. There's the Big Red up the near side. Mitch Vandalin spun around and he was held up. Man, it's going to be a slashing call here. And I think it's going to be Tommy Apap going to the box. And the Big Red a chance to double their lead on the power play after scoring on their last man advantage in period number one. And we're seeing more tonight of what we've gotten used to over the last three years, Grady, is Mitch Vanderlin along the boards, keeping his feet moving and just churning them. And a great ability to cut back and forth, change direction, use his edges create some separation and invariably it ends up being a defensive player uh, ending up taking a penalty just trying to keep up with Mitch. Well the captain with two assists last night as he had a hand in both Cornell goals he draws a penalty call on APAP and the Big Red. Their third power play chance as they look to double their advantage here currently stands at one nothing as Michael Regish leaning in at the dot and he ties up with Saliba Spartans on the puck and tried to dish it behind the net, but the Big Red quickly on the scene and Morgan Barron got to release that one to the blue line. Caldas for Barron, tried to force a pass through that penalty killing box. Fortunately, it'll flatten out onto the stick of the captain, Vanderlin. Behind the net, game of catch there between he and Michael Regish. Caldas at the line, Mullen touching it over, but no shot for Vanderlin. He'll spin away back in front, tough try, and the paddle down save made by Letham and a beauty there. And the Spartans play it down. Good positioning by Letheman. Cornell moving the puck a little bit more around the perimeter than they have so far where they've been uh, taking the shot first rather than the extra pass. Caldas to the line. He's going to carry it in. Splits the seam in the right circle. Takes a slash from Gafari. And now along the boards, both teams digging for it. Apap in the box in the slashing call. Barron feeding. Vandalin shooting up high on Letham and knocked it down. And then he covered as the freshman Michael Regas tried to dig it free. That draws the attention of the visiting Spartans. And most everybody will gather behind the net now. Not unlike a little gathering that we had last night in period number two after a big goal mouse scramble on a Cam Donaldson breakaway chance he was looking to put together. Yeah, we saw last night clearly the Spartans. Uh, understand the value of their goaltender and anyone gets too close to them they're they're coming to his aid and setting a tone and we're going to get a couple of matching penalties here Gafari's going off and uh, who do we have for Big Red? I think it was big number two, two six, yeah. Tristan Mullen yeah. There's uh, some fiery personalities so uh, <laughs> makes a lot of sense and with the defensemen coming in they were well underneath the faceoff dot so this faceoff accordingly moved outside the zone the big red still with 61 seconds to go in the power play here penalties not posted as there was already a power play in effect so it's two players off on untimed minor penalties as this one will be played down with Goleta leaving it behind the net for Alec McCray under four and a half gone by in period number two a one nothing Cornell lead over visiting Michigan State Big Red to the game's only goal, Ayani Caldas. Power play tally in our first period. And I'm going to say a hand pass here against Cornell as that rush into the offensive end, somewhat short-circuited. Max Andreev with a couple of words for one of our referees here. He's going to move this draw outside the zone. Yeah, you know, it's the, the right call. Andreev doesn't like it because it wasn't really a quality hand pass. It was more like a hand <laughs> touch, but it still counts. you got to get the whistle. Yeah, you want to have <laughs> a good hand pass. That's right. <laughs> Cornell going to control it here, looking to quickly work in. Alex Green 
Angled to the boards and into the corner by Tommy Miller. Puck came free, it's ripped around, and that'll send McCray back on the chase inside his own blue line. 20 to go in the call against APAP. Now APAP is serving it, I guess. Number one is on the board, so I guess that slashing call went to Leffen and the goaltender. No, he's 31. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be 11 on the board. Yeah, I think I gotta you're stop right. talking yeah. and just talk about what I know where the puck is on the ice. <laughs> Here they come, two on one as a penalty getting set to expire. A shot saved, made by Goliath, no rebound. As McCray got back, it was APAP in the box as he spun out, went to the Spartan bench. We're back to five on five. Donaldson, a low wrister, and that one steered into the corner by John Letheman. Now Saliba, met by Brendan locked down low, and the defense going to settle it here for the visiting Michigan State Spartans in their green road jerseys. Trailing here 1 0 after posting a bit of an upset last night, defeating Cornell 5 2 in the opener for the Big Red. As they look to work in here, it's going to be an icing call and a faceoff coming back into the MSU zone with 5 40 having been played here in the second period. Yeah, long pass there from the defensive zone to Hiroshi, who was on the wrong side of the blue line as he picked that puck up. Shots at a premium so far in just under six minutes of play. A combined half dozen, four for the Big Red, just two for Michigan State. Score has remained the same. Coming into the period, it's one nothing. Big Red, Cornell wins the draw. Keldis couldn't try to feather that one through traffic as Hiroshi stepped out on him and blocked it down. And now Hiroshi pulling the skates out from underneath Yanni Keldis. That'll put Cornell back on the power play. They're going to say it's a cross check as once again, everybody gathering, some words being exchanged, but Big Red are going to walk away from this. Hiroshi to take a seat and Cornell on the power play. Yeah, discipline important in this situation where maybe frustrating getting taken down like that, but a great opportunity for the Big Red to get a second power play here in the second period. Speaking of which, what was your vantage point last night? I know it was fairly similar yeah. to mine, but that big goal mile scramble in which Donaldson was pulled down. I saw the replay here. I don't know what you saw live, but Alec McCray taking a Spartan player, throwing him into the goalpost, and then Max Andreev coming in with a flying cross check. Somehow those two things, I believe, went on. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and Andreev came in, uh, let's say, with full, full vim and vigor. Yeah, uh, yeah, it looked on like that WWE one. out there. That's yeah. what it looked like. Yeah, we had a. Uh, Although I think it was Milan who uh, ended up cross-checking to get that started. He got the penalty for it, yep. but. Uh, I really uh, thought as I saw it unfold and then we had the benefit of the replay, yeah. Cornell would have had the power play. They were then gonna be shorthanded, but yeah. it didn't uh, wash out yeah. that way. And I was a bit surprised. I just bring it all up to talk about being disciplined once you have Hiroshi going to the box on the uh, cross-check call. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure that uh, the coaching <laughs> staff doesn't want to see a repeat of, of that, although. <laughs> You got to defend your teammates. It's uh, you want to take the man advantage when you can get it. No need to be jumping off the top rope yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Number 15. <laughs> <laughs> Rikish in the left corner as his power play now down to 70 seconds. Cornell, one nothing advantage and uh, looking to double it here. They've had a couple of cracks at it on the power play, but unable to do so so far. As Caldas tried to find a friendly stick, Locke couldn't get the blade down, nor could Rigish. Now Barriner's shot, and that one deflecting high into the rafters, and I believe over that end zone netting, and it came back down. We're going to face off in the Michigan State zone here. 55 to go in the call against Tara Hirose. Yeah, matching penalties are off the board, so Mullins out of the box and, and back on the bench. And seen some nice stick checking by Michigan State to deflect that puck up into the netting before it gets to the front of the net. We just saw it there on Morgan Barron. Well, the Big Red win this draw, but kind of teased Alec McCray as that one rolling free through center. And Alex Green had to come back on it. He'll crisscross with McCray and big 2-9 going to come through center. The Big Red still with 39 to go on the man advantage as they work their fourth power play opportunity and looking to improve upon a 1-0 lead, McCray. Settles down that spinning puck off the left kick plate. Saliba with an eye on him. Of course, Saliba, the shorthanded strike last night in the first period to get the scoring started. Low shot here, and Lethemann got a piece of that as Sterrett was jostled around in front by Gaffari. Now Green shooting that one off the leg of teammate Sterrett, right back onto a Cornell stick. 
Big Red controlling. Sterrett looks to the front. Nothing doing there as Gafari challenged. Now Andreev and a stuff try. That's not made by Lethem in that puck jumping up into the air. The Big Red controlling as the Spartans are back to full strength and fanning on it along the blue line. That was Alex Green. He recovered over for McCray, who dumps it in. The Big Red making a wholesale change here as the score remains 1-0 Big Red. Just under 12 minutes to go here in our second period of play. Cornell with chances, but just cannot improve upon the slimmest of leads, but it's a lead nevertheless as Estevez plays it in. Off the glass, Mullen. Love down the neutral zone by Dennis Cezana. He's Dennis Jr., his dad, Dennis Sr. Played back in your days in the yeah. ECAC up with RPI. Didn't play a yeah. lot. He yeah. played a handful of games yeah. over three years, but he was there. Yeah, yeah that was a pretty good squad in, in, the, in the 80s. Shot here, wristed off a Cornell stick. Spins around the glass. Rosberg can't hold in at the point. Now it's a skate race. Easily won by Rosberg as Noah Bald was forcing the issue. Bald cut back for a change as the Big Red now looking to pick that puck up and we're going to get a penalty call here. Hirose, who went to the box last time around, will pick up the call here. And we'll take a break, come back for the Spartan power play after this timeout, 11.01 to go in period number two. This is Ivy League Hockey on ESPN+. Plus. Kyle Betts to the box for Cornell. He got locked up with Tara Hirose right in front of the Michigan State bench. So that's going to put the Spartans on their third power play. And they're looking for the tying goal. The Big Red with two power play chances, uh, unable to get a two-goal lead. But now Cornell moving in shorthanded. Barron hesitates, hits the trailer as it was Caldas tapping a stick on the ice, calling for that pass. By the time it arrived, the Spartans had collapsed on him. So what looked promising fizzles out and Michigan State to come ahead through center. Probably a shot Morgan Barron's going to want to take next time rather than try to force that pass. Spartans setting up in the offensive zone down to our left here. 124 left in the call against Betts and now a big jam up along the boards. And tempers flaring. We can't pick it up here on our Look from the press box, and now we see it's Lambden and Caldas. Look like it evolved into a bit of a wrestling match, and we'll see maybe if we get some kind of a replay on the uh, rodeo down along the wall that we couldn't see with the naked eye from our broadcast position. But I think it's safe to say we're going to get some penalty calls here. And yeah. Yanni Caldas, the first to depart as the Cornell penalty bench door swings open. Yeah, I think Lambden's going as well. We're going to get matching penalties, I'm pretty sure. So the power play yeah. was already in effect, and it looks like one aside. Not uh, selling Logan Lambden short, but uh, as far as trades go, taking uh, Caldas off, uh, being an important part of the penalty kill unit, that's a pretty good trade for Michigan State. Saliba and Vandalin, the captains for their respective teams on the edge of the crease, chatting with one of the linesmen. You can see the other three members of the officiating crew talking the calls over. So. The parties have been identified. The question is now what will the calls be? And the longer they talk, the more uneasy you become, I would think. Yeah, I'm wondering who's going to get the second, although we talked about that scrum in front of the net. They had a long conversation last night about who was uh, going to get the extra and who jumped in and who didn't. But I don't know, I'm feeling when too much goes on, you can't keep track of it all. So they just say, what the heck? Just uh, call one and get, <laughs> get it moving. I think uh, the Cornell fans were thankful they don't have video review <laughs> on uh, sorting out penalties in that situation. Uh, like we talked about earlier, there were a couple of flagrant ones that I thought could have been called, but uh, it kind of went by the boards. So it looks like it's just matching calls. The power play will continue five on four style. We haven't had the official word in house, but Lambden and Caldas in the penalty box. So hitting after the whistle, that's kind of a catch all. <laughs> Roughing or unsportsmanlike, something like that. As a puck going to pop out through center. And Cezana quickly on it. Barron turned him around as the Spartans will hit the reset button. Hiroshi lost the handle, and McCray will slam it all the way down. Morgan Barron really, you know, last year had a really strong start to the year and a, and a nice year last year, but strength-wise, speed-wise, he's coming to this year looking very good. 
was comparing the rosters uh, when I was here calling the two exhibition games and kind of looking at who's put on a few pounds, and we assume that's always in a good way as far as muscle build a shot here from a steep angle, and Patrick Kordorenko puts it top shelf across the body of Goliath and over his hand, and the power play goal with 9.36 left in the second will tie this game at a goal apiece. Yeah, Kordorenko just took a nice shot, quick little snapshot and I, I do think he beat him over uh, might have been near post over the shoulder we'll see here on the replay yeah beat uh top corner glided not quite tight to that post and not pushing up into it to make himself as big as possible and Kodorenko beat him to that near post well, Kodorenko with his second goal of the season and now three points in four games counting his action here tonight. Clearly a goal scorer. That's a goal scorer goal right there. So back to five on five hockey. Nope. And this puck heads up right below us. That almost picked up the Michigan State radio crew situated at center ice. We'll take a break. Tie game at one here in Ithaca on ESPN+. Plus. Well, the official shortchanging us on that last uh, commercial timeout, Tony. And uh, as we were away, uh, not much in the way of fireworks, mm -hmm. but uh, there was a quick shot. You didn't miss anything. The game is still tied at a goal apiece, but penalties coming here, but we'll get maybe matching calls coming up as there's a little post whistle scrum. And uh, as you saw, you actually thought Cornell was going to get a power play, but then it looked like they were probably going to make it a wash. Yeah, no, I, I thought uh, Kyle Betts took a handful in the face, and, and Michigan State was going to get called for the penalty, but... Uh, Kyle Betts is in the box as well, and nothing's up on the board. So, um, you know, the, the official safe call, matching penalties. Now Brody Stevens, we saw him uh, trail off the ice while we were still in commercial break. Betts in there for Cornell. And we're going to face off here. They're going to put it down the Michigan State zone. So we continue on five on five here. I right. take that back. They mm -hmm. didn't put it so up to Tommy Apap. Apap gets the extra call, so it's going to be a Cornell power play. It's going to say everything happened down here. Why would they move the face off to the other end? They would do that if it's a power play, and that's exactly what we have going on here. Draw to the right of Letheman as the big red looking to snap a 1 1 deadlock. Okay. And he called us in the first period, and here in period number two, beauty of a short side goal by Patrick Kodorenko. Andreev and Estevez. Andreev winning the draw and the big red good at control. Green is shot. That one going off the Michigan State penalty killer. And the big red going to settle it down here. Still roughing against APAP. And Stevens roughing as well. And Kyle Betts, I'm going to guess, roughing. <laughs> <laughs> There it down low, little game of catch in the corner with Andreev. Now it comes back on top, long shot, glove hand save made by Letheman, and he had it squeezed and well taken care of, but a collision to his left with Miller and Starrett tumbling onto the scene, made for a dicey situation, but Letheman steady between the pipes, he made the squeeze and he'll hang on. He came out with a good probably foot above the top of the face off, or uh, top of the crease, challenging that shooter, not really giving him any real angle and stare at doing the right thing, working from the corner over to the front of the net, trying to get a stick on it. Well, Letheman with 12 wins last year, he factored in every Michigan State win. So there, there weren't many a season ago, but in Danton Cole's first year, making positive strides with a club that won just seven games the season before. And uh, pretty good accounting of themselves so far this weekend here against a nationally ranked opponent as that puck squirting free from a crowd along the end boards and alertly covered by John Letheman. 119 left on the, the power play. Cornell not getting quite as many shots as they did in that first period when they had a couple of power play chances. Really, it was almost wherever they were. If they had an opportunity to get it to the front of the net, they were shooting it. Now they're working it around the perimeter a little bit more. Like or not like that? Would you rather see volume, or are you kind of looking for that quality I, setup? I'd rather see the volume right now with... Uh, the way things have gone and, and the way Letheman's been playing, just try to get as much as you can and, and get some action and activity down there. Green, a one-timer, neatly kicked out off the right pad of Letheman. The big red on it. Now some space near side. One-timer. Oh, Andrea put that one off the post. May have also grazed the pad of Letheman, who is moving nicely laterally from right to left. McRae shot. That one catching teammate Cam Donaldson, who scrambles over to keep it in play. McRae. 
at the blue line. Green from McCray turns, looks to the front, no shooting lane as Kodorenko jumped out on him and now forces Green to the half wall, stepping in to help out as Cam Donaldson. He lost it, Green to the circle, shooting, blocked away by Gaffari. Gaffari limping, now in front of backhander, left them in the save of the game right there as he denied Bo Starrett right on the edge of the crease and now will cover and a Cornell skater gets shoved into the pile as Donaldson. Ending up on top of Gafari and both entangled with goaltender John Lutheman. Lutheman made a heck of a save and Starrett right there. Starrett using his body to shield the puck and, and just wrapped it around. Having caught it on his, his forehand, now we're going to see it right here. And receives that puck, turns around and just fires it on the back end. Lutheman taking away that, the bottom of the net, a heck of a save. Well, the Big Red turning up the heat here over the last... 10, 15 seconds on this power play chance that now shows 32 ticks of the clock still left in it. The Spartans win a big draw and Tommy Miller got to rattle that one off the glass and it'll settle back into Cornell territory. And that penalty kill, defensive zone, face off. Face off prowess is so important. Caldas coming in, Rosberg taking away his path down low. Now Mullen on it for the big red. Penalty time down to seven seconds as the Big Red looking to take their second lead of the night. Thrown to the front, Mullen waving at it. It came up empty, then deflected back towards his stick, but he couldn't steer it in on Lethemann. The Spartans clear it, and they're back to five on five. Over seven minutes to go here in the second period, a 1-1 game. The Big Red and Yannick Peldis scoring in period number one. Here in period number two, Michigan State tying the score on the beauty. Shot by Patrick Kodorenko. Spartans had it, Regish with the steal, turns it down low, and Zach Osborne turns. He had two big red four checkers to contend with, but he took the heat off, pushed it near side, and now Hirose through center at the line. Saliba drops it back, Lewandowski from the slot, and that's snuffed out by Brendan Smith. Cole Krieger dishes to the corner. Malat battling there as he put the body on Hirose, and the puck fired to the far side of the ice. Lock off for Nuttall near side, and the Big Red looking to clear ahead with six and a half and counting to go in period number two. A tie game at one, a big hit in the neutral zone as Malacha steamrolled Gianluca Estevez. Now off the board, Smith turning his ball, couldn't get it in deep as Cody Milan there on the back check, and the Spartans looking to settle things down as they push ahead. Christian Krieger. Long rainbow into the zone as he was looking for a change. The big rod on it, and here they come. If they broke out cleanly, they would have been able to put together a three on two. It did not materialize. Smith the other way, and his hard shot blocked it out by Goleida. Haven't said Matthew Goleida's name a whole lot over the last uh, several minutes. It's been kind of quiet, but he comes up with a stop there on Smith. Yeah, Smith using the Cornell defenseman and his forward as a screen. Outlet knocked down by Wojtek Stachowiak and the Spartans with an opportunity. A weak backhander by Saliba as he had trouble taking that pass in the slot. Now behind the cage, Lambden to the point. Osborne to the front shooting out of the glove hand of Goleida. Rebound, they score. That one shoveled home by Lambden. A misplay by Goleida and with 5.20 to go in the second, Michigan State takes their first lead of the night at 2-1. Yeah, that puck just bounced off the heel of Goliath's catching glove and right back into play and Lambden did a nice job of beating him short side over his shoulder it looked like. We'll see the replay here. That puck coming out, Goliath seeing the puck and just bouncing out and yep, beat him over the glove hand just under the under the bar. So Logan Lambden, his first goal of the new season, his third point and it's a big one here on the road as the Spartans giving Cornell all they can handle and then some. Last night winning 5-2 and now have a lead late in the second as they have taken a 2-1 advantage over the nationally ranked Big Red. Andreev is outlet through center. Caught a Michigan State stick as Sanford got a piece of that. And Cornell has to reset it inside their own blue line. Kicked free, Donaldson through the neutral zone. Michigan State back defensively, had all five guys back as Donaldson and Motley were making a go of it on their own. Liam Motley dressing as the 13th forward here tonight, spot duty, puck free in front, Motley with it, turns, fires, and the save by Lethemann. He'll hang on, and we'll take our final break of the period. 2-1, the Spartans in front here in Ithaca. This is Ivy League Hockey on ESPN+. 
Get a look at head coach Mike Schaefer on the bench and one of his two assistants there in the frame, Sean Flanagan. Got to know Sean's brother quite well down in Binghamton for a couple of years as uh, Kyle Flanagan, a member of the Ottawa Senators organization for a couple of seasons. And uh, uh, to know Kyle quite well. And uh, I would say I'm sure his brothers are cut from the same cloth and yeah. uh, a really good family. Yeah, Sean's a, a great young man. He uh, was a heck of a hockey player. He's a heck of a coach. Just pleasure to be around. The Big Red here and playing from behind for the first time on a Saturday here in Ithaca in the new season. Brody Stevens working it out. Sanford to the line, cutting to the front. Tommy Apap and that one. I thought it actually it snuck hit. home. I thought it was a misplay by Galaitas. It That's was. It hit the post. Wow. It slid in underneath them. Yeah, this one poked free as the Big Red were coming back in transition. Todorenko now starting it. Front of the MSU bench in. And now we start to see a little bit more confidence. Quick shot and a go! Mitchell Lewandowski rifling it home from the right face-off dot. And just as you felt that wave coming in that top line out there, they proved lethal. And the Spartans, two goals late in the second, they built it up to a 3-1 lead here in Ithaca. And Lewandowski just capitalizing on what was a ping-pong play with the, the puck at the top of the blue line teammate was able to slide it over to him and he was able to hammer it home for a one-timer on the back door behind Goleida and Cornell just struggling a little bit with uh, the passes and, and Michigan State taking full advantage of the opportunity. You know, not a surprise to see that trio take advantage of a situation like that but it was the overriding theme last night in the third period. Turnover, boom, ends up on the back of the net as a big hit delivered by Noah Bald. He's still engaged with Jared Rosberg down to our right. Both players back up on their skates as Betts then went down, took an elbow up high, and we're going to get a penalty call as Bald and Rosberg come together once again in the same portion of ice. Betts threw the penalty call, and we'll wait and see here who threw the elbow, but the Big Red. I think they're going to be back on the power play as Patrick Kotarenko will skate to the sin bin, but getting back to Friday night in that third period, Cornell defense making mistakes, and Goleida not sharp. And here tonight, Couple of mistakes here late in the second period and both have dented the twine. As Michigan State looking to take control and the Big Red now in the power play here trying to get some momentum back. Yeah, Kotorenko ended up clipping Kyle Betts as he was looking for the puck. Didn't have the, have the puck and so wasn't really expecting to get hit like that. And uh, looks like Kyle Betts is getting attended to by trainer Ed Kelly. Hopefully, Kyle will be okay. So faceoff will be to the left of Latheman. Late second period, the Big Red on the power play. It'll be their fifth of the night, one for four so far to account for their only scoring. That was the power play tally by Yanni Caldas as it went off the hand of Tommy Miller and made its way in on goal. Actually, Sam Saliba was the one that got his hand on that. Calling that ice level replay. Caldas firing here and that one. Blocker to side by Lethemann. Caldas tracking it down as it was cleared out to the point. Now Barron steps to the circle, looks back door, now shoots and a six save made by Lethemann. Almost a no look shot there as he was glancing over to the left circle, but he couldn't beat Lethemann. Barron with it again. On top, Caldas. Big red down by a pair here late in the second, feeding it in front. Mullen firing wide on the short side as he was then low bridge by. Butrus Gafari, Cornell with it, tried to center, that one deflected on the way through, it was hung up on the base of the cage, the Spartans away from the crowd, and that'll be lobbed all the way down and doing the honors for Michigan State. As they play it all the way down, the Big Red gonna move it out, that was Brennan Sanford. With the big clear after Cornell was pushing there to try and make it a one goal game. Here comes Vanderlyn, tried to stop on a dime, but that dime had a little bit of a slickness to it. Big Red <laughs> holding it in. Andrea back for Caldas, high slot, Vanderlyn left dot, Caldas on top, long shot, and that one fired high and wide, and the rebound played off the glass, and the Big Red will have to regroup here with 49 to go in the call against Patrick Kordorenko. Big Red actually, as we take a look at the online score sheet, this is their sixth power play, so 0 for 5 last night, 1 for 5 so far in this game, late second period. They've had their opportunities on the power play as Michigan State has had some penalty troubles on the weekend, but so far for the most part have not paid the price. And they've built up 
a 3-1 lead here in the second period with Cornell trying to draw a little bit closer before we get to the 40-minute break. Alec McRae knocked that puck down at the line, but couldn't hold in. Everybody has to clear out as Locke goes cross ice, and Alex Green looking for some space. He moves it in, swings it quickly to his left, and Cam Donaldson now with it. Looking for McRae, but stepping in with Brennan Sanford, and he'll tip it out of the zone, and they'll change up. All five skaters now as we're back to even strength hockey with 75 seconds to go in the second. Just trying to force that extra pass there rather than take it to the front of the net. And Michigan State anticipating it and doing a nice job as a result, breaking it up. Minutes to go here in period number two. Big Red have surrendered three straight goals after opening the scoring here tonight. Here comes Jeff Malott, chased by Mitchell Lewandowski. Lewandowski giving. The Spartans, the current two-goal cushion that they enjoy as their big line has accounted for the last two goals in this one. Play down, Brendan Smith challenged there. He got locked up by Kodorenko, who then tried to center. Puck ramping up, Gafari at the line. Malat challenged him. The play stayed on side with a half a minute to go. Oh, it's Nuttall pulling it away from a gathering. Far side of the ice. The Spartans back with it. Lambden guarding the point. He'll take the feed here. Gafari looking on. Stuff try to the side of the net. Man, that one blocked away. Now without a stick, Noah Ball, Gafari shooting. Blocker save made by Goleida. Jumped off that pad. He couldn't make the squeeze as the final few seconds coming off the clock. MSU with one last blast. And Malott will block that one to the side wall as a buzzer sounds. And... What was a 1-0 Cornell lead heading into period number two definitely has turned on a dime quite sharply. No soft spots there as the Spartans hit a trifecta in the second period. And for a young team looking to find itself, if they maintain this lead into the third and end up sweeping here in Ithaca, it's going to go a long ways to uh, kind of giving them a ton of confidence for this upcoming season, both overall and in the Big Ten. Yeah, they will have found a lot if they can walk out of here with, with winning both games in and really, Cornell, if you look at the first period, nice job. Second period here, um, I would say that for the majority, they probably controlled things, but Michigan State being very opportunistic, capitalizing on the chances they were given, and, and Cornell had given them a couple chances, and, and they potted them. And as a result, they're up 3-1. That has been their MO this weekend, opportunistic and solid goaltending once again by John Letheman, who has surrendered just two last night and uh, the one here this evening. And Cornell in a bit of trouble after 40 minutes. We'll take a break and have our second intermission report coming your way. Tony and I will break down the highlights. We'll have some out-of-town scores as well. 3-1 Michigan State leading Cornell. Our second intermission comes your way next right after this as you're watching Ivy League Hockey on ESPN+. Plus. Back here in Ithaca, taking a look at the out-of-town scoreboard before we start our third period of play in the ECAC. Rensselaer looking to make it a weekend sweep over their Capital District travel partner, winning at Houston Fieldhouse last night over the Union Dutchman. And tonight, 4-0 in Schenectady. The engineers in front. Harvard leading at Dartmouth 4-3. Both those games getting set for third period action. Elsewhere tonight, Colgate on the wrong end of a 6-0 final at Miami of Ohio. Clarkson on home ice leading Canisius 2-1. They get set for the third period at Chill Arena. Quinnipiac all over American International 5-1. They're going to start the third period momentarily in Hamden. And St. Lawrence on the board, but they continue to trail at Michigan by a 2-1 count. Teams on the ice, and we're about a minute or so away from the start of period number three. And... Uh, Matthew Goleta still in net for Cornell, so that answers our, our thoughts that were being wondered about aloud here on Press Row during our second intermission visit. And, and that would be a little bit of a tough call as well. I mean, you, you look at what this kid came in and did last year as a freshman, but again, I've said it last night and tonight, it, it's a new season, and you hate to feel like you have to prove yourself all over again, but basically, you got to prove yourself all over again. You really do, and, and you know, the, the teams need to compete. Every position competes. We've talked about the depth of this team, and that depth extends to goaltending. There's, there's no givens. Um, I think you're given the opportunity to build on what you did from a year ago, but there's uh, no perpetual rights that are earned based on last year's performance. As I typically say in the pro game, whether it be major leagues or minor pros, what have you done for me lately? That's right. 
And while I talk about the relative grind beginning this week for the Cornell Big Red hockey team and for all D1 programs across the land, uh, you know, it's also a very short type of grind because every game means so much. It's not an 82 game NHL schedule. It's anywhere between 29 and 35 games and that's what you have to make your case to make the NCAAs. It's a long season for college sports, but when you compare to even some of the junior uh, seasons that they played before coming in here, it's a short season. So we started off here even in full strength as Hiroshi gets around a falling Alex Green, a shot and a goal. Tara Rossi early on in the third, just 48 seconds in as the Spartans add to their lead. And now we will see that goaltending change that we surmised in our second intermission visit as Goliath faces just one shot for a second straight night. He will head to the bench. And Austin McGrath getting the play again. He just got beat five hole again by Hiroshi uh, between the legs and uh, Hiroshi's a goal scorer, but again, a, a shot two nights in a row between the wickets, uh, something Matthew Goliath is going to want to have back. By the same player? By the same player. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look like we were looking at a replay from last night. That's how identical it was to the Hiroshi rush last night, and it is a 4-1 hockey game. That's the bad news from yeah. the big right perspective. The good news is they still have 19 minutes with which to try and get something going. Green along Rister, Lambden on him, smothered the shot. Green not going to pick up the rebound and carry it behind the net all the way back out on top. Andrea of a shot, and Lothaman, despite the traffic in front, as Osborne and Vanderlin were jostling around, he got the pad on it. Now it trickles off the end boards from a gathering, and Lothaman, he has been calm and cool between the pipes, and even when Cornell ratchets up the pressure, or they get some bodies right in front. Just uh, the movement is minimal, and that's usually when you know a goaltender's at his best and locked in, and he stops play here. Yeah, he's on the post, not, not moving, not worried about where the puck's going to be coming from. He knows he's in the right position, and then he's covering it up to get the whistle. Faith in his centerman that they're going to be able to win the draw in the defensive zone. APAP will look to do that, and he does. He executes perfectly. It's banged off the glass. Sanford couldn't settle it down as the big red got a push back inside the enemy blue line, but Morgan Barron was ahead of that wobbling puck as the deflection kind of threw things out of whack for the big red with 137 gone by here in our final frame and the confidence just keeps growing for this Michigan State team and Tara Hirose, second night in a row, identical rush and beating Matthew Goleida between the pads on both occasions has given the Spartans a three goal cushion with which to work with here on the road at line of rank. Pushed around, Regish to the corner. Left them in a poke at it as he tells that puck to get out of here and it's Dumped out the center ice in front of the big red bench. Nuttle run into there by Sanford. Puck ending up on the Cornell defender's stick. And he'll fling it right up the gut. Now Barron, left wing moving in, long shot. And playing his angle nicely, absorbing that initial try and no second chance rebound. Lethemann once again coming through. We'll get a face off to his right. 17.51 to go here in regulation. I know we've talked a lot about it, Grady, but it just a perfect example right there. As you see that shot come in, Morgan Barron puts it in. It's high and it's a long ways away, but no bobble, no bounce, no anything. Just sucks it in. You know, Green with a little juggle at the blue line and Milan gonna test him one-on-one -on -one while he awaits some reinforcements. Milan tried to drive to the front. He dropped that right shoulder, but couldn't shake free of Green. And now the Spartans up with it. Good work behind the cage by to the by Gafari. Now Milan with it once again. He got shouldered off the play as Caldas made the tink back and the big red through the neutral zone. Caldas trying to skewer it past Boutris Gafari. It'll be settled by Smith who got knocked down from behind by Mallet who then puts the check on Gafari. There's the big red. Couldn't get anything going. Zach Osborne steps up and his shot. Knocked down by McCray. Couldn't carry it out as it was Kotarenko getting in the path. Big Red make the recovery, and good to see Kyle Betts back out there after he took that high hit late in the second period. Spartans push ahead. 
Lewandowski, who has a goal here tonight, as all three members of that top offensive unit getting on the board this evening. Penalty call coming against Michigan State as a big red. Got to get this play blown dead on an offside. Rosberg trying to go to Cornell skater. That was Alec McCray into retaliating to even things up. But 2-9 keeps his hands down. It's going to be a Spartan go into the box and Lew the big red, a seventh power play. Yeah, Lewandowski's going to go off. He hooked the Cornell defenseman at the, at the blue line as he was getting up ice in transition. Good trade for the big red. Oh, no, 2 nine's going to end up in uh, the box as well. That's didn't see that. They were. I thought it was, it was someone else. I think it was Rosberg trying yeah. to get him to take a penalty. Yeah. And I didn't see whatever it was that McCray did to get him sent off, but no power play, so scratch that. Yeah. Which is, is too bad because uh, Cornell had an opportunity to go up on the man advantage. That call was back in the defensive zone against Lewandowski, and Alec McCrae's was called in the offensive zone. Well, Mike Schaefer a bit vocal on the Cornell Big Red bench as he finally gets one of the referees to come over to explain the call here as to what transpired. All Schaefer seems to have seen was the penalty by Lewandowski, but obviously something post-whistle, and you got Peter Fiola, veteran referee over there, explaining it. Schaefer's not going to like it, but it is what it is. And we're <laughs> no matter what the explanation is, we know for sure. <laughs> Not going to like it, and, and the frustration is going to probably be more with his own player than it is with, with Fiola. Now some open ice here as we go four on four for the first time here this evening with those penalties posted on the board. Lewandowski for hooking. And McCray post whistle on sportsmanlike conduct as Terry Hirose. Is forced back out to center. Now the puck off the stick of Rosberg as Caldas had an escape. Now it's free in the slot. Donaldson fires and scores! Cam Donaldson, Johnny on the spot. As Caldas made the play, he occupied three Spartan skaters inside their own blue line. And Donaldson said thank you very much as he guns it home from 40 feet out to make it a 4-2 game. Yeah, good following up by Cam Donaldson on the rush, as you said, being led by Johnny Caldas. And Caldas just attacking the center of the ice, drawing the attention of three Spartans. Puck coming loose, and Cam Donaldson doing the right thing, getting it on net and beat Letheman. We'll see if there is a secondary assist as Caldas did all the work to get that puck into the enemy zone, and Donaldson cashed in. Well, some life here at Liner Rink. We'll see if the home team can build upon it. Max Andreev in, drops it off, shot. And that one off the toe of Letheman's stick as Matt Nuttall let it go from long range. Nuttall with everybody back on side, steers in deep. So the big red taking advantage of the open ice, though I say that, everybody was kind of jammed up above the inside hash marks before Donaldson stepped in and gunned it home. Long wrister, that one punched out by Letheman. And Cornell riding the initial Wave of energy after the strike by number seven. They put more pressure on. Nuttle, low shot, bounding through the deep slot as that one skipping through untouched. It ends up in the Zamboni corner. 39 seconds left of four on four hockey. Pass to Hoviak. We'll clear it. And Brendan Smith back on it for the red. Some real energy. Cornell attacking, aggressive, playing physical, and moving that puck. Here comes Green in, right circle shooting up high on Letheman. No rebound with Vanderlyn crossing the edge of the crease, and he will hold on here. Still 22 seconds to go in those matching calls against Lewandowski and McCray. And the draw to the left of the Spartan cage upcoming here, and a two goal deficit facing the big red. Last little bit here. I think it's the first time so far this weekend I've seen Letheman maybe juggle a puck or struggle, struggle to find it. So Cornell needs to keep that pressure on. And Two goal differential, but it's a lot of time. 15 minutes left. Tommy Apap, he's been good at the faceoff dot tonight. Wins another one, but the Spartans can't clear. Caldas neatly slips around his man Miller, shooting, kicked out by Letheman. Rebound, gathered in. Captain Mitch Vanderlyn with it, makes the handoff. Caldas around the perimeter with Miller, poking it off of his stick temporarily, and now Tommy Apap stepping in. Back to five on five hockey with the return of McCray and Lewandowski. And now a hand pass whistled down here, and fans not happy about that. And the draw outside the Spartan blue line with 524 gone here in the third. 
I think if the linesman was curious as to whether that was the right call or not based on section A and B, <laughs> um, I think that he made the wrong call, but not really sure, a lot going on there. So uh, Cornell's back at it, some, some good action and good buzzing. It may have been, I'm assuming, no nameplate on the back, that may have been Anthony Kenny. So we'll, we'll, He's we'll had a long him. night. He's yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll cut him a break. Yeah. He did the uh, Cornell Dartmouth women's game. Oh, a loose puck in front as it was Osborne nearly putting that one into his own net. Oh, well, that would have been some puck luck there for the Big Red, but he made the recovery, and now Cornell is on the defense here. I mentioned the Cornell women's team a couple of times. They, like the Big Red men, eighth ranked nationally coming into the weekend, a 3-2 win over Harvard yesterday here at Lina Rankin. This afternoon, they blanked the Big Green 4-0, so another good start. Looks like another nice year unfolding for head coach Doug Dara. Yeah, no, Doug's done a fantastic job with that program over the years. A great player in his own right when he was here and a nice pro career afterwards uh, overseas, and he's done a fantastic job with the women's program. Should be an icing whistle here against MSU. It is, and the clock will freeze with 13.34 left here in period number three. Can you feel a little bit of the, the balance shifting here? Yeah, Cornell's definitely created a momentum switch and a shift and they were able to capitalize with one goal. It's real important in the next minute or so. We always talk about momentum swings happen, seem to go in these five minute increments. And so Cornell's a couple minutes left and hopefully they can put another one up on the board. Well, they win this offensive zone face off. Turn around Rister by Keldis, left them in the save and we'll take a timeout. Big red in comeback mode, but trail up by a pair here on ESPN+. Plus. Michigan State with the win last night, maybe somewhat unexpected on the road for a still budding program under second year head coach Thanton Cole, but you win that first one. You, you would have come in and said a weekend split would be nice, but you win Friday night. You know you want that you second one. You want both one. of them. You want both <laughs> of them. It was nice before you won the first one. At that point, it's you want two of them. Buck of the Cornell zone and commenting with Mike partner here tonight, Tony Eisenhut, uh, Austin McGrath. I don't think he's had a touch since he entered the game after that early strike in the opening minute of the third period by Tara Hirose. Sent Matthew Goliath to the bench for a second straight night and now in front. Backhanded shot never came as that went in the skates of Kodorenko and then Sasana let a drive go. Up and over the net, caught the top of the dasher, touched the protective netting and that'll bring about a stoppage. Yeah, Austin McGrath still hasn't had one but the Shot attempts so far have gone gone wide, and we talked in the break the fact that goaltenders want to see some action. They want to feel the puck, especially when you come in in relief of a teammate. Best thing for Austin McGrath would be to get a couple of saves here under his belt. APAP ready to go at the dot. He is met there by Andrea. The Big Red going to win this one. And Donaldson with speed, the defense falling down. Donaldson now looks back to the slot, hits a trailer, shot through a crowd. That one sent wide. Donaldson reads centers, and Andrea couldn't steer that one to the front. Now a quick drive, stick stop made by Leatherman. Puck was loose below the hash marks, but it was moved out of harm's way by Brody Stevens, but Michigan State unable to get the clear. Nuttall lifting a rolling puck up and over the cage. Now Vanderlyn settling. Karen's whiffing on a shot. Puck bouncing around down low, and Vanderlyn couldn't pick it up as it scooted away from his stick, and the Spartans get the clear. Big push there by Cornell, but all for naught. Everybody on side, the big red back in. Karens, who closed the scoring last night to make it a 5-2 final, dumps in deep, gets off on the change, the Big Red, with just under 12 minutes to work with here to try and mount a comeback. Less than 12 minutes separating Michigan State from an unlikely road sweep here in Ithaca, New York, as Cornell back on the attack. Collision in the Zamboni corner boards as Liam Motley. Takes a rare turn here tonight. Caldas guarding the point as that one is being rummaged around for along the kick play. Big Red away with it. Caldas to the line. His shot right into the shins of Sam Saliba. We saw that last night in period number one. Alec McCray on a Cornell power play. And Saliba neatly kicking that one ahead on that occasion and scored a shorthanded goal. Not the same result here as the Big Red quickly back in. But now moving it out, it'll be Lambden. Lambden with a goal here tonight, and he is going to go to the box as Keldis wrapped himself around Lambden's stick. 
Landon frustrated as he gets to the bench. McGrath off to the extra attacker. And Cornell to the power play once the Spartans touch up. At the line, they get a stick on it. And the whistle will halt the proceedings as Lambden still looking in disgust at referee Cam Lynch out at center as he goes to retrieve his lost stick before taking a seat in the sin bin. Yeah, Lambden's stick did get caught in, in Caldas's nothing intentional there. And Cornell will be the benefactor power play opportunity with a real momentum switch, switch so far in this game and a, a great opportunity for the Big Red. So the Big Red on the man advantage. Both teams milling around their own bench. Wasn't quite sure if maybe Cornell took a timeout here to try and. They haven't taken a timeout, but uh, Coach Schaefer's using a few years of experience yeah. under his <laughs> belt to, uh, <laughs> to make sure that he's got the right guys out there and you know just use time to your advantage. So Lambden goes off at 9-16, still over a half a period to play here as the Big Red down by a couple. Not a good start as APAP wins the draw, cleared off the glass. The Big Red held it in, and a juggle by Morgan Barron sends the Big Red scrambling back into their own end. Now Barron getting that puck to settle out. Puck is stolen away by APAP. He couldn't move forward at the red line. Caldas now up with it. Feathered it down low as he found a seam. Vanderlin chasing it off the end boards. Off for Caldas. To force that one to the front. Miller got a piece of it, and the Big Red with possession once more. We're now on the power play here for an eighth time. Quick shot, knocked down in front. Rebound is loose, and that one grazing the pad of Leatherman. I think it was Tristan Mullen right on the doorstep, couldn't put it in. Angled wrister by Barron, catching a stick up and out of play into Section A. Yeah, Michigan State lucky they didn't end up with another penalty on that. Is stick getting up high on the hands of the Cornell player? One of the players we talked about at the, the start of the game uh, off air was Tristan Mullen and just how his season progressed last year and seeing him on the power play out here, even strength, really a spark plug. Big part of why this momentum has changed. He's big in general. Yeah, I yeah. think he even plays a little bit bigger than what he's yeah. listed at at 6'2 yeah. or 6'3. Donaldson, face off dot, steers it away from Sam Saliba as the big red settling it down here in the power play formation that has 60 seconds left in it. Lopped out to the blue line. Green on the take over for Donaldson. Feeds it through, and the easy pickoff there for Michigan State. Perosi got in the way, and that one sent all the way down. 47 seconds left on this power play, and Big Red have to get the puck to the net, have to take those shots, not spend the extra time moving it around. Lambden in the box for the visitors. Big Red trying to dump it in. That catches a Spartan leg. And it's cleared back down as the Big Red short-circuiting themselves here as goaltender Austin McGrath pulls it behind the cage with Brennan Sanford closing in quickly. Cornell going to work it out here. One final push on the man advantage. As Smith through the center circle. 15 to go in the power play as the Big Red play in deep. Nobody on it as the green jerseys get to it first. And this one rung around the boards by Tommy Miller. Quick outlet in is Barron. He's shouldered by Zach Osborne. Played it to the point, nobody home. Erosi in. Feeds the trailer, and that one just off the heel of a Spartan player. Erosi back on it, and Mitchell Lewandowski centers from beneath the goal line. That one scoots to the far wall. Now Patrick Kordorenko. Kordorenko, Erosi, and Lewandowski all scoring here tonight. And a long drive, first shot that Austin McGrath has seen up high on him. As Boutros Gafari tested him from the high slot, punched away, and the Big Red clear it. And unfortunately, the Big Red power play comes and goes, and the score remains the same at 4 2 with just over eight minutes to go in regulation time. Intercepted at center. Malat in, firing, locked away, rebound, and the blocker stop made by John Latheman. Malat on the rebound, looked to the point, nobody was home, only two green jerseys were shadowing him, and he couldn't work it out of harm's way. The Spartans pushing it ahead, and here comes the line feather in, and Danton Cole's club going to make a five-skater change, and the Big Red changing up four out of five here as Green holds behind the cage. Good, yeah, good pressure by the, the Big Red, and just really attacking defense, jumping up into the play and making sure they're creating turnovers and offensive zone pressure. Rosberg on it. 
in his own zone. Laid up the half wall. Smith awaiting at the point, but it's taken away by Michigan State. That's Estevez. Hands it off, and it's played in deep by Jake Smith. Sasana at the point, a redirect in front off a leg, and that one nowhere near the goal mouth from our angle. It looked like it had a chance, <laughs> yeah. and then it took that big bounce into the corner, and now both teams digging for it. Smith up high on McCray. The physicality of this game has been something that we've seen pretty much from the opening puck drop here tonight. One-timer neatly kicked out by McGrath. Cody Milan denied just above the inside hash marks, and Cornell looking to move out here as the Spartans complete a change. In with speed. Look to be Chase Brakel, I think. It was. Yep, it I was. said 21 or 27. Yeah, I wasn't sure if Morgan Barron was there or not. <laughs> Six and a half to go was a big red. Changing forces back out at center. Andrea was in deep. Vanderlin looking on as this one is cleared past him by Jared Rosberg all the way down, and it'll be an icing stoppage here. Time, a growing concern for the big red as they have just six minutes and 21 seconds to try and erase. A two-goal deficit. The Big Red have pressed here in this final period, scoring just one goal. That coming from Cam Donaldson. John Letheman, he's withstood the push here and withstood the storm, and he's continued to be a strong reason as to why the Spartans are looking at a weekend sweep here on East Hill. And Malott had a, a nice series where Letheman made a save, but Malott really putting pressure on Michigan State, and Cornell's going to need to do more of it in the last couple of minutes here. Puck is cleared out. The Big Reds, some difficulties trying to settle things down. The freshman, Michael Regish, behind the net. Chase there by APAP. Outlet thrown away, and now McGrath forced to handle as the Spartans making a quick change up front. Saliba back out there. He'll pursue the puck carrier. That's Yanni Caldas, and the Big Red putting the play outside. We'll take a timeout under... Michigan State up by a pair here in Ithaca. Just under six minutes to go here in regulation time. Elsewhere in the ECAC tonight, Rensselaer looking for the weekend sweep. Union, some comeback thoughts in the third period on home ice. The Dutchman with a pair, but they have just four and a half minutes, and they trail the Engineers 4-2 and a wild one. Thompson Arena in Hanover, New Hampshire, as we'll get an icing call here against the Spartans. It's Harvard and Dartmouth all tied up at 5-5. With 10.23 to go in the third. <laughs> Defensive up, battle up there. That one could end up 9-8. <laughs> <laughs> Next weekend here in Ithaca, Yale will be in town on Friday night. Brown on Saturday. Both games can be enjoyed right here on ESPN+. Plus. Hope you can join me for the call of those two contests as the Big Red begins defense of its ECAC and Ivy League regular season championship as we'll get another icing call here against the visitors from East Lansing, Michigan. And Michigan State's going to be very comfortable keeping things uh, at the Cornell end. And if they can get across red line, just dumping it in, a light four check, really bottling up the neutral ice and, 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 and playing for the win. And that's probably what to the benefit of Cornell because good chance it backfires. One timer by Smith, and with bodies forming a screen in front of Lutham, and that one off the net. Sterrett draws the penalty call. It's going to be tripping here against Osborne as Cornell to go on the power play when we come back. 526 left. The big red down by a couple on ESPN. So Zach Osborne to the box here at 1434, the third. The big red on their eighth power play. Cornell certainly has no room for complaints as far as lack of opportunities on the man up. And they've actually outshot Michigan State overall now. They trailed in that category early on tonight. It's now 33-26, thanks in part to eight power plays. A head-hunting shot by Morgan Barron deflects up and out of play. And the early stoppage here. And the man advantage just 19 seconds in. And look at the other side of the coin to Michigan State. They've had just three power plays in each of the two games here this weekend. And you were talking about during the break, Tony, the, the difference in officiating when you go from conference to conference when you have these interleague matchups. Yeah, you're just not used to it and, and uh, can be frustrating as a coach. Long shot and a go! Yanni Caldas right off the draw as he snapped a seeing eye shot. And the Big Red draw to within one as they notch their second power play tally of the night, both off the stick of number eight to make it 4-3. And nice goal by Yanni, third point here in, in a 4-3 game. And uh, winning it off the faceoff. And it's, as you said, just seeing eyes. And 
think that's one that Lethman's going to want to have back because it wasn't really a super hard shot. Maybe a little bit of a screen, but just not in good position. Well, the big red, the face-off win, and Caldas pulls the trigger, and Cornell now two for eight on the power play as Caldas lights the lamp. Michael Regish picks up the primary assist, and it's a one-goal hockey game. Off the glass, bounding puck. The Big Red looking to rush in here. Malat and Bald in deep. From the point, the Big Red push it to the end boards. Rosberg plays it ahead, and it will be retrieved by Brendan Smith. Well, you talked about maybe a little bit of the, the layback style, the yeah. prevent defense. You know what they say, the only thing it prevents is you from winning. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I agree with you, Grady. It's, you're sitting back on your heels. You're comfortable just dumping it in. The game gets slow, and, and, and people just play down to that level. And, and if your opposition can, can focus, which Cornell's done nicely here in the third period, they create scoring chances and opportunities and you're able to convert it, and it's really hard to kickstart it back up when you've been playing. I like that, the prevent win. <laughs> and you know what? After such a large sample size throughout the course of hockey history, why do teams still do it? <laughs> <laughs> they consistently do. Just over four minutes to go here, and this one looks like it'll go down to the buzzer here tonight. Stahoviak, he'll chip it around. Yanni Caldas, who has been the offensive catalyst tonight here for the homestanding Cornell Big Red. He looks on now as his partner, Alex Green, has the puck, and now Caldas will pull up behind the cage as a breakup, very deliberately, a breakout rather, being very deliberately set up. Caldas galloping through the neutral zone at the line, moves in, dropping it off, and everything kind of got congested, and the Spartans with Cody Milan coming back one on three. Neatly kicked away there by Matt Nuttall. Well, off for Caldas, and he'll start it up again, but Milan applying the four check, so not as smoothly this time mm -hmm. around for the Big Red. Andreev has to help out. It's intercepted by the Spartans. That one popping up in the slot area. A hand pass will be whistled, and then Sanford giving the rough ride to Donaldson into the side glass. The linesman quickly jumping in, and we'll get a face off in the Big Red zone with 3.15 showing on the clock here, and the Big Red, despite kind of seeing the hammer dropped on them, trailing four to one early in the third period on the Hiroshi goal. They've scored the last two and they've made it a little bit interesting here. And you look at the, the goals that, that went in against them, um, and probably goals that should have been should have been stopped and so could have been in a situation where they were coming out of here up. Ooh, a shot there. McGrath got a stick on it. It may have caught a portion of the goal post as well and went wide and the Big Red will throw it down. That one just wide of the net. Had Letheman been forced to play it, the action would have continued, but he didn't and it'll be an icing stoppage here in the draw coming all the way back into the Cornell end. 2.58 and see that goal maybe woke up Michigan State a little bit. All of a sudden, you kind of see the ice tilting back a little bit, and they say, hey, we're not out of the woods yet. We need to play a little bit in the other end. Hey, we've got we've got to finish this thing out, and Cornell's going to keep the pressure on them. Michigan State has their big line out there, but it's the big red that comes away with the puck. Vanderlyn firing, and that one blockered away as the Cornell captain tried to go short side high. Big red on it. Now Lewandowski taking over. He'll find a seam, throws it all the way down. It's a skate race, and Hiroshi didn't do enough to nullify the icing call as Brendan Smith won that skate race just barely. Yeah, nice job by Brendan Smith because Hiroshi's he's a skater. He's got good speed, not just quick. He's very fast. Timeout by Michigan State. Obviously want to get a fresh set of legs out there and make the line change rather than have a tired group out there. Well, they got, they got to stay out there, though. It's an icing call, so they take the timeout just to rest them up. <laughs> I think you can't you make a change? Can you? I, I think you can I'm so in college. In, I'm so, so ingrained with the pro side yeah, of things. Yeah, I'm just right. thinking that was kind of one of the advantages of that, yeah. that you, you had to leave those tired legs out there. Yeah, yeah it looks like they did change the college game, I think you can change them out. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan Cole circling the wagons here and talking a little bit of strategy here as the clock I was going to say it's down to 36 seconds I know we've got more game time left than that but okay. Two our minutes. TV time is uh, tied into that as well in the score bug but somewhere in the vicinity of a couple minutes okay. just probably about mid two minutes which Cornell's got the advantage or gets the benefit of the timeout here and 
able to talk about things. We'll probably get another timeout if uh, the goal, if the game stays a one goal game. And Coach Schaefer want to talk about what he's going to do when he pulls the goaltender, and and that would probably be, you know, a minute, minute thirty somewhere in the, in that time frame. So another another minute if Cornell's not able to get on the board in the next uh, minute, minute six seconds or so. So timeout complete, 2.36 as you can see. What we have left in this one, McGrath still in goal down to our right, a one goal deficit. So we will stand put for another minute or so as the Spartans gonna poke this one out off the icing draw in Michigan State territory. Sanford losing his footing, stepping in Milan as he'll just push that puck along the kick plate deep in Cornell ice. Now McCray spinning Sanford around, fished out of some skates, and the Big Red unable to break cleanly. Morgan Barron, however, stick handling around two Spartans and now has some room. Skates it right down the slot, and now it looks a little bit like Keystone Cops there yeah. as once again it got jammed up high in the slot. Goes all the way down, it caught the side of the net. McGrath didn't touch it, so another icing call here. And head coach Danton Cole, not happy. I'm, I see, there's an official in the vicinity, but it looked like Brennan Sanford was the one on the receiving end of some words from the coach. Uh, Dan, Dan Cole showing a little bit of expression over there. We were yeah. talking about maybe uh, he's a, he's a well-contained man, but uh, showing some expression and line of faithful getting up, getting loud. Off the draw, puck gonna roll into the corner. Into the slot, Donaldson firing, and Sanford. He had a fire lit underneath him from the coach as McGrath is on the bench. He blocked the Donaldson drive and an empty net for Cornell. As they go six on five here with a minute 42 and counting. Headlong dive as that was Keldish trying to get that puck in deep, he failed. Donaldson circled back out and sends it in for the captain, Mitch Vanderlyn. Along the blue line, off for Caldas. He was looking for a one-timer, but the pass in tight on him. Caldas at the point, shooting it. Hard bounce off the carom, looking for a friendly stick on the opposite side, nothing doing. As the Spartans get the clear, but they can't get a shot off at the empty net. Michigan State, partial change, has a big red move in, still at a shot, and a glove hand save made. Lothaman to freeze the action with 71 seconds left. And Maybe Cornell might take their time out here, but they sent the line change out. We'll wait and see if Coach Schaefer decides to stop things here. My guess is Coach Schaefer will call, get the new line out there, and then and then take that timeout. But actually looks like they're, yeah, now he's called the timeout. <laughs> Barron was ready to go at the dot against Sam Saliba, but the Big Red will take their allotted 60-second timeout here. And one goal margin, and the Big Red with American goaltender Matthew Goleida pulled in both starts against Michigan State this weekend and they can score a goal here gets him off the hook and Austin McGrath hasn't faced a lot of pressure here he has faced just three shots but he stopped all three and once he kind of got the feel of the puck there it was good to see him and uh, get that activity but right now I'd like to see everything tilted down to our left here if the big red can get the tying marker and get this one into overtime they've got just over a minute to do with it and one of the things that the Big Red are going to want to do is make sure they get some traffic down there. We just saw Bo Starrett coming down on the left, taking that shot. And as excited it is from a fan standpoint, Lethemann has been uh, up to those challenges. And unless there's traffic in front of them, uh, because the, the goals that have gone in have really been on a screen um, or, or some type of obstructed view. Yeah, deflected off of a hand, that's right. So... Um, Cornell's not going to want to take those open lane shots because Lethman will save them all day long. He's been strong here this weekend. Has the junior out of Northville, Michigan. Three goals. You might raise an eyebrow at that, but as Tony just talked about, Lethman, when he's seen it, he's pretty much stopped it this weekend and gave up a pair last night. Three here this evening, but he has been one of the strong storylines as to why Michigan State may walk out of line of rank with a couple of wins this weekend. Buck is pushed out. And McCray off the body of Kodorenko. Arthur Mintz in the background informing those on hand. We've dropped down under a minute to go in the third. Saliba towards the empty net. McCray saving the day there as he got the stick on it as he lunged towards that shot. Hiroshi couldn't keep it in. And here comes Morgan Barron feeding it off. Vanderlyn firing. And once again, 
John Lutheman square to the shooter, takes the angle away, the easy save, and he'll freeze it with 41.5 left. And not only was he square to the shooter, clearly out at the top of the crease, taking away that, that angle. So offensive zone, face off, Morgan Barron coming in, Mitch Vanderlyn holding it till the last minute, hoping something was gonna develop and materialize, but really no other option other than take the shot. Lethman ready to go. He is looking to finish this one off. The Big Red, however, win the faceoff. Caldas down low as that one jumped off a seam on the boards. Michael Regis, the freshman, handing it off, and Caldas tried to tee it up for Max Andrea, but that was out of his reach, and Cornell now regrouping, and now just a matter of seconds here. They need to push it ahead with just 20 left. Can't be going for a skate as they look for a seam up the middle. Caldas off for Regish. 15 seconds into the corner. Osborne slowing the play down. Tristan Mullen behind the Michigan State net. Pulled free by Morgan Barron. Angle try. That one off a of Michigan State leg. It comes out to center. And that is going to do it for the Spartans. One last shot in on goal as Letheman makes the save. And Danton Cole, a very happy coach as the congratulatory handshakes across the way on the bench with his assistance. Michigan State coming into line of rank this weekend. They dropped the hammer on the nationally ranked Big Red 5-2 last night, and they hold off Cornell here this evening 4-3. Yeah, heck of a showing by Michigan State coming in here. Tonight a much better game for the Big Red. Lots of chances and opportunities. A few bad breaks on a couple of the goals that Michigan State was able to convert on, but just a, a much better effort and something that Michigan State's going to be very proud of, and you talked about building on the season from a year ago and the progress they made, this is a, a great start.